With version 2.12, Notion released a handful of exciting updates, so let's take a look at the ones that you'll most want to be familiar with. Three of the updates relate to comments, the first of which is the new comment sidebar, which you can toggle by clicking the speech bubble icon at the top of any page. And that comment sidebar is going to display all of the comment threads for the page in chronological order according to the first comment in the thread. And for any thread, you can click on it and your page will jump to the location of that comment. And then at the top of the comment sidebar, you can toggle between open comment threads and then those that have been resolved. And for any comment thread, you can contribute a reply directly from the comment sidebar. And then the next update is this ability to include attachments within comments. And when those attachments are images, they'll actually display within the comments. So if we click to reply to this comment, I can paste one that I've previously copied. And then this paperclip icon allows me to attach a file. So I'll choose an image here. And when I do that, I see a preview of it. And then when I click to submit the comment, it's going to upload that image and display it within the comment. And then the third comment update is the ability to copy the URL for any comment. So within this three dotted menu here, we can choose copy link and then we can paste that link into an email or Slack or wherever we're communicating and the recipient will be able to visit that comment within the page. And Notion now allows you to copy and paste columns. So previously, if you were to copy a group of blocks arranged into columns and then paste them, they would be pasted as a single column. But now when you paste them, it will preserve that column arrangement. And that includes pasting into toggles. So previously, using columns within toggles required kind of a hacky trick. But now you can copy blocks arranged into columns outside of a toggle. And within that toggle, you can paste and it's going to preserve that column arrangement. And then in another update, Notion now displays the icons for linked to page blocks and linked to databases and page references a little bit differently. So previously, the arrow that would be included in these types of blocks would be placed outside of the pages icon, and that created kind of a clunky experience in hindsight. But now that arrow is going to overlay the icon, which uses less space and create sort of a nicer, smoother, more streamlined aesthetic. And we also now have a new little trick in database templates. So you can at mention me now in the template. And when you at mention me, it's going to be replaced with the person who's implementing the template when a new item is created. So this template here uses that at me mention. So if we are to use that template within an item of that database, we can click on the name of the template, it will load, and that at me is going to become at William Nutt because I'm signed in as William Nutt and creating a new item using that template. And then lastly, we have an exciting new database function. And this function wasn't officially included among the updates in version 2.12, but it was identified at about the same time. And that function is the ID function. So in Notion, each database item is technically an independent page, and each page has a unique ID. And so those page IDs are used in a lot of useful ways. They're part of each page's URL. They're used by automation tools like Zapier and Automate.io to identify which pages to watch and update. And then in relation properties, when you populate a relation property with a page, you see its title. But if you were to reference that value within a formula, it would return the unique ID of the page. So if we're to add a formula property here, we can type the ID keyword and then complete it with parentheses with no argument. And that's going to return for each item its unique ID. So what we can do with that is we can add another formula property and we can call it the page's URL. And then within the formula, what we can do is start it with a text string 
So this is going to be the beginning of every page's URL, where this Nut Labs here is going to be the slug for your specific workspace. And so if we were to add one of these IDs after this last backslash, then it's going to complete the URL for the page. So we can reference that ID property to complete our full URL. So we could copy any of these URLs, paste it into our browser, and it will take us directly to that page. And if you hit any roadblocks with the ID function or any of these other updates, please feel free to tweet any questions to William Nutt.